Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make this cushion. If you do like this video and would like to see more content, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so basically I'm making a cushion because someone I know their birthday's coming up and I thought this would be a nice gift to make them. I haven't got an awful lot of time to make it, so that's another reason I've gone for a cushion because I think um, it won't take too long, hopefully. So normally I make an envelope fold when I do a cushion, so that's when it's got, um, you don't use a zip or anything or any other fastenings, um, you have one long bit of fabric, you fold one bit over, the other side overlaps, so that if you do need to take the cushion pads, you've got an opening at the back. The only drawback to that is you don't really have a proper back. If I just um, get an example. So here is an example of an envelope fold cushion which I've made previously. So as you can see on the back, the two, there are two back pieces and they overlap. So although the cushion pad isn't on show, you can get it out if you did want to wash the cover. I'm not actually sure why I did this one with any opening because it's probably quite difficult to wash. But anyway, apparently I've got the option. So obviously the advantage of doing the envelope fold style is that you do not need a zip. But why do the zip version? The reason that I'm doing the zip version is because I had really limited fabric for the back piece. I wanted to use a plain white for the front because I'm going to do a bit of free machine embroidery on it. But the back I wanted to have um, a colour background. So I've gone for this grey, which is lovely. But I used this for three aprons last Christmas and it means that I haven't got an awful lot of it left. So I just about had enough to cut this square of fabric. So as I mentioned, I've got a plain front. I think this is bleached calico to be honest. There's my zip. And the design I'm going to be using is of a succulent plant because I believe she likes succulent plants. So a breakdown of what you need if you do want to follow along. So I've cut out two squares of fabric for the front and the back of the cushion in the colours that I wanted. So for this, this is 42 centimetres by 42 centimetres. The reason I've done it this shape is because my cushion pad is 42 centimetres. Although it is 42 centimetres by 42, and I've cut out a piece which is exactly the right measurement, this is actually factoring in a one centimetre seam allowance all the way around, because I actually want the cushion pads to end up 40 centimetres. This is just because I think it's nice to have a really firm, bouncy cushion, so um, by not giving a lot of wiggle room it will mean that it's um, a nice plump cushion. So yeah obviously if you do want to make a different size cushion just measure your cushion pads. Depending on how plump your cushion pad is you may want to add a seam allowance on top of that measurement rather than doing what I did so in that case you just need to add whatever you prefer as your seam allowance. Put two lots of that one so one on each side and then do the same for the the length as well. Okay so they're the two main pieces of fabric. I've also got a scrap because I'm going to do a bit of a plique on it and it's going to be the pop section of my design. So what I've done to create this template is just I've drawn loosely around the outside of the pop because what I'll do is I'll free machine stitch the line which will just be inside the appliqued bit of fabric I'm going to add. Yeah obviously if you want to add a bit of decoration you need your design. And then I've also got some different threads to use so I'm probably going to use black to draw out the the pot at the bottom. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use black or just go straight onto the shades of green for the leaves. I'll have a think about it when I get there. Oh and obviously you need the zip as well so I've chosen one that's um, this one's actually quite long. It's 44 centimetres, so um, it's more than enough. So you just need to choose one that's essentially the um, length of one of your sides to ensure that you've got enough there. I've also got a magic pen to hand, so I use this when I want to be a bit more accurate with my free machine embroidery design. I'm also going to use a bit of Wonder Web to stick the plant pot section. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to overlock all of the edges on my front piece and my back piece. I'm just doing this now just to get it over with. Normally I'd stitch a seam and then overlock it but because I'm adding a zip I don't want to forget to do it and put the zip in first so that's my first job. Obviously if you don't have an overlocker you can just use the overlocking seam on your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch or depending how much your fabric frays you might even be able to just use pinking shears um, but as I do want this to 
be able to withstand the washing machine if they do decide to wash it every so often. Um, I just think that overlocking it will help it last longer. I'm now going to move on to creating the design. I'm going to trace my plant pot onto Bondo Web. My Bondo Web's quite uh, old, so the, um, the sticky layer and the paper layer are coming away from each other. So. Uh, just something to bear in mind if you uh, don't use off your bondo web. So I'm just having to be extra careful that I'm holding on to both layers so that they cut together. Next I'm going to attach my shape to my grey fabric, the um, off cut that I've got. Once you've got that side stuck, so obviously make sure the sticky side is against the fabric and your ironing on the paper piece. Then you can cut it out. So I'm just cutting around the shape. I just realised actually you don't have to do it exactly the shape like I have done. Normally I actually just cut it loosely on the first stage and then once it's ironed on I then cut it to shape. Okay, so that bit's done. I'm just going to take off the paper packing now, just because I've done this before where I have attached, I, I've positioned it all perfectly and then I've realised I've left the paper on and had to move it. So the next step is working out where you want your motif. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out roughly where the middle is. And I'm doing that just by folding it in half, then folding it in half again. I know that's roughly the middle. Might just make a little dab with the magic pen. And there we go, so I can see my middle there. Just work out what the middle is on this as well. I mean, it doesn't need to be exact, so I'm just, uh, it's probably going to be the exact, but it's like a fake idea. It marks the spot. Hopefully I'll be able to see that underneath there. Okay, so I think I'm fairly happy with the positioning. So, I knew that I'm going to have this section here. And I'm just going to iron this on first because I don't want to iron the fabric pen design on there or it may become permanent. Right, so now I'm going to draw the lines that I want to follow for the free motion design. With my design drawn out I'm going to go onto the machine now. If you do want to make a similar design basically what I did to find the design I wanted was I just had a quick look online so I searched for succulents, found an image of a succulent that I liked and then just used that to draw my own version.
Okay, so now I've got the design on the front of the cushion sorted out, I'm going to move on to attaching the zip. So I want my zip to be at the bottom of the cushion, so I'm going to move that over to one side. I'm then placing my back piece on top of the front piece so that they line up. Next, I'm going to mark four centimeters from either edge of the side that I'm putting the zip on. The reason for this is just so that there's a bit of a border on either side, so the whole edge isn't completely zip, if that makes sense. So I've just marked that with the magic pen, and then I'm just gonna put a few clips in so that it stays in place as I move it over to the machine. So I'll just do a straight stitch over the four centimeter bit of the top end and the bottom end. Now it's stitched on at those two ends, so I'm going to get the ironing board back out. Okay, so with one side pressed out, I'm going to put the zip right side down. Undo it slightly. Yeah, I've just grabbed a few pins, so... I'm going to pin up at the top. I'm going to pin it somewhere in the middle. And lastly, put a pin near the end. Obviously you can add more pins if you want. So now I'm going to stitch that side of the zip on. So for this I need the zipper foot. Okay, so one side of the zip is attached, so next I need to the other side. So that's the zip in place. I'm not going to top stitch it because I don't think it needs it. Right, so the final step is to go all the way around. So I'm just going to peg it in a few places. But yes, yeah, so I'm just going to now finish the seams of the other three sides. And then hopefully we should have a cushion. all of that you might need to trim the corners just so they come out nicely I'm just gonna check how it is another thing to note is to make sure you have your zip open so that you can turn it right sides out uh, which is what I thought to do yeah so I think I'm going to also trim the zip off now as well Okay, so there you have it, there's the cushion. So as you can see, it's not too difficult to add a zip. Um, it just, depending how much your fabric costs and where you get your zip, it's just cheaper to do an envelope fold rather than a zip one, but um, it does mean you use less fabric. And also it means that you could have a, du a double design, so you could have something on the back as well. Obviously I didn't in this instance, but it obviously has a much cleaner finish not having that. Um, you don't need a, contrast zip like I've done. Um, it's just that I'm trying to not spend too much on my hobbies this year so <laughs> I've used one that I picked up in a charity shop in a previous year so it only cost me 20p which was brilliant. It's also a really nice metal zip um, and I think it goes nicely with the um, the green leaf leaves on the succulent. Uh, that's it for this time, thanks for watching! <laughs>